In the early 1950s, there was an outbreak of malaria in Borneo. The World Health Organization tried to solve the problem by spraying large amounts of DDT to kill the mosquitoes that carried the malaria. The DDT worked, and the mosquitoes died. But other things happened as a result. First, the thatched roofs of people's houses began to cave in because the DDT also killed the wasps that ate the thatch-eating caterpillars. With no wasps to eat them, there were more and more thatch-eating caterpillars. Other insects that died from the DDT were then eaten by gecko lizards, which were then eaten by cats. The cats died, which allowed the rats to multiply, which resulted in outbreaks of two new diseases, plague and typhus, carried by the rats. What was the response? Operation Cat Drop. The World Health Organization actually parachuted live cats into Borneo to eat the rats. This is what happens without systems thinking. The best leaders are typically systems thinkers. Uh, systems thinking helps leaders see the big picture and understand and influence the consequences of their decisions across the community, since society itself is a complex, adaptive system. Systems thinking is the philosophy that everything is connected. But systems and their connections are not always obvious. So systems thinking sometimes requires us to see the invisible. A system is generally defined as an organized collection of parts or subsystems that are highly integrated to accomplish an overall goal. Now, there are many different kinds of systems. They're cultural, environmental, economic, mechanical, electrical, and, and so on. For example, the human body is a system and contains 11 major subsystems, such as skeletal, muscular, nervous, and so on. The key principle is that if one part of the system is changed, the nature of the overall system is changed as well. A system functions as a whole. For example, dividing a human in half does not give you two smaller humans. Even centuries ago, the Buddha said, nothing ever exists entirely alone. Everything is in relation to everything else. Peter Senge, in his book, The Fifth Discipline, explains 11 laws of systems thinking. I'm going to focus on the four most relevant of these laws, what they mean, how they affect our decision-making, and how they applied to the COVID-19 pandemic. The first law is, today's problems come from yesterday's solutions. A solution to the hunger problem was industrial production of food. But the use of colorants, preservatives, nitrates, and GMOs cause health hazards today. Coal was used to generate electricity in the United States in the 1880s and to fuel the steam-powered horseless carriage. The first car with an internal combustion engine, another solution, changed the demand for petroleum products around the world forever. And as we now know, fossil fuels are a finite resource, and they harm the environment, contribute to climate change, and lead to cat catastrophic effects to our, uh, to our environment. Problems caused by yesterday's solutions. With COVID, today's problems come from solutions that were half measures at best and didn't follow the guidance of the experts. The United States has 4% of the world's population. We have 25% of COVID cases and 20% of COVID deaths. The Atlantic Magazine published an article a year ago stating that we had time to prepare for this pandemic. At, this, at the state, local, and household level, even if the government was terribly lagging. But we squandered it because of widespread asystemic thinking, the inability 
to think about complex systems and their dynamics. The next system law is the harder you push, the harder the system pushes back. Remember prohibition, the war on drugs, criminalizing marijuana. When our initial efforts fail to fix a problem, we just push harder. We're told that hard work will overcome all obstacles. But we fail to realize that often we are the ones creating the obstacles. With COVID, people pushed against simple safety measures such as social distancing and mask wearing or called mask wearing a political statement. The systems just push back harder, giving us higher cases of, of deaths and, and higher numbers of cases and deaths. COVID has also highlighted the fact that deforestation makes future pandemics more likely. Does it make any sense that in our ecosystem, a tree is worth more dead than alive? Now, as the human subsystems destroy wildlife habitat, displaced animals move into closer proximity with each other and with humans. Climate change can also affect where these animals go and bring pathogens closer to humans. Fast Company Magazine published an article entitled, Why Our Shrinking Natural World is Increasing the Pace of Global Pandemics, stating that conservation is suddenly a public health issue. Now, we know that nature always wins. So is it possible that in our ecosystem, the human race is the disease and the pandemic is the cure? The third system's law, the easy way out usually leads back in. You go to the doctor for a headache. Doctor gives you some pain pills, your headache goes away. A couple weeks later, headache comes back, you go back to the doctor, more pills, no more headache. Easy fix. A couple weeks later, your head hurts so bad you have to go to the ER, where the doctors run some tests, meaning acquired data and they diagnose that you have a brain tumor. The first doctor took the easy way out and treated the symptom without fully analyzing the problem and treating the cause. Systems thinking is a disciplined approach to analyzing problems more effectively before acting. With COVID, all the experts agreed that strong act active measures were required to slow the pandemic, social distancing, mask wearing, quarantining, avoiding large groups. But these measures resulted in small businesses closing, many permanently, a global recession, and lost jobs. And some would argue are worse consequences than the safety measures. The real dilemma here is who gets to decide which is worse. And why isn't the loss of life a bigger factor in the decision? As Senge wrote, sometimes the Easy or familiar solution is not only ineffective, sometimes it is addictive and dangerous. The long-term consequence of non-systemic thinking is increased need for more and more of the solution. And we've seen this happen. When COVID first spiked in the U.S., the president said it would magically disappear. People resisted quarantining, mask wearing, avoiding large groups. Leaders didn't institute safety measures because of the impact on people and businesses. They ignored scientists and took half measures, and the numbers spiked dramatically. Some have even called it pandemicide. They took the easy way out and based decisions on emotions or politics rather than data. And the easy way out led us right back in and made things even worse. The final systems law that I'll discuss today is faster is slower. Every system has an optimal speed. When growth becomes excessive, the system will try to compensate by slowing down, and that puts the entire system at risk. We all know the moral of the tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady is better than quick and careless. A quick fix usually equals a slow cure. I heard many times in the Air Force, we never have time to do it right, but we always have time to do it over. With COVID, we fast-tracked 
a vaccine within a few months when the normal clinical trial process can take years. In May of 2020, the vaccine development program was actually named Operation Warp Speed. And yet today, 10 months later, we're still having problems distributing and producing the vaccine. There are actually COVID mutations that the current vaccines will not affect. According to the CDC, the COVID variant that first showed up in the UK, quote, looms ready to hijack our successes to date. Worse, 16 states have just lifted mask mandates against CDC guidance. It's like the rookie Air Force navigator on his first mission. We're lost, but we're making darn good time. So to succeed in life, in business, in society, we must take a systems approach to planning and decision making. Understand that everything is connected. We should learn from COVID-19 and avoid a future pandemic or at least be better prepared to deal with one. Remember, in systems thinking, the critics are the actual optimists. They always think there's a better way. If nothing else, we should now realize that measures taken to, pre to protect the general public are not an infringement on individual rights. We say that every system is designed, perfectly designed, to get the results it gets. But how do you get the results you want? Where do you start? Well, first, understand your system. Compare it to other organizations, other communities, and benchmark against their best practices. Another way is just to start small. Pick the low-hanging fruit. A famous sculptor was once asked how he was able to create such beautiful sculptures of, of horses. And his response was simply, I start with a piece of stone, and I just chip away everything that doesn't look like a horse. So you can start today by knowing your system and chipping away everything that doesn't look like systems thinking. And if you stay with it, you will end up with a system that gets the results you want. Thank you all very much.